The Junkies podcast does not reflect the views of Utah State, Utah State Athletics, or its affiliates. We talk USU soccer, volleyball, and cross country on the first ever episode of USU Junkies. What's up, Aggie Nation? I'm Kyle Haywood. I'm Blake Hadfield. And guys, we're here to talk about all things Utah State Athletics. Now, Kyle and I were fortunate enough to spend a great afternoon, early evening together at the Utah State soccer game. They played host to the Creighton Blue Jays for really Utah State's first ever competition as full-fledged members of the Mountain West Conference. And they did not disappoint. No, they didn't. It was a gorgeous day for soccer yesterday. We, I went up, I had a blast up there. I haven't seen that many people out to a soccer game in quite a while. I mean, I don't know how many people were there, but the stands were pretty full. Um, we had people lined up around the outside of the yeah. the outside of the field. There was quite a few people. It seems like Aggie Nation's actually pretty pumped about not just, you know, football and basketball, but all Aggie sports. You know, I've been pretty impressed with the the amount of fans that have come out to support these teams um just here to to start out the season. And yeah, it was it was gorgeous weather. I mean, a little bit of cloud cover wasn't too hot, a light breeze, and mm-hmm. these girls put on a show yesterday. They did, and I, I think you mentioned the crowd turnout. Uh, it's you know, Scott Barnes says it all the time. It's a great day to be an Aggie. Uh, what what these teams have been able to accomplish last year, and then the excitement of moving into the Mountain West Conference. It's a great time to stay on board if you're aboard, or jump on board if you if you have not. Uh, so last year, let's talk about soccer's success in the last year. Uh, they went thirteen and three and six. And they won their second straight WAC title. Uh, they have been picked tied for third in the preseason coaches poll. Uh, they they return a wealth of the talent that brought them success last year. They actually returned 17 letter winners they do. as well as eight starters. Yeah, and I mean, I, you, it was pretty obvious yesterday um, the the type of... Um, on top of soccer that they were playing was just you could tell they'd been playing together for a while. They have a lot of they were subbing a lot of girls in and out, um, getting some of these newer girls used to the to the type of soccer that they play. But you know, definitely, definitely going to be some good things coming from these girls. You know, like you said, these this is a program that really has seen a lot of success in the past. Um, you know, they've won several regular season. Uh, conference championships when we were a part of the WAC and for the last two years straight they've won the WAC tournament um, including last year um, here in here in Logan you know they they had the actual WAC tournament here and and won the championship game I mean I was able to be to that game and it was fantastic it was one of the most ex- it was one of the most exciting uh, soccer atmospheres I've ever been to you know and I've been to a lot of uh, Real Salt Lake games mm-hmm. and uh, and a few other soccer games and and that was that was incredible being a being a part of that, um, but I mean the type of success that this program has seen, it's it's exciting when you have that success in the past and then transition to a new conference with a lot of yeah. competition, a lot of good competition. We're going to be talking about some programs coming up. I mean you have. UNLV is always a good. They're always a good program. Um, New Mexico, New Mexico actually has. Uh, they're they're a, they're a fantastic both. They're a fantastic program for both men's and women's soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they've uh, their men's program has has a couple players actually up in playing in MLS. One of their one of their. Uh, former players actually plays here in in utah for real salt lake devin sandoval he's got a big old bunch of hair behind his head but (laughs) so i mean new mexico is definitely a program that um that can make some noise but then i think the clear favorite for the mountain west this year is going to be san diego state they actually go into the season ranked number 11 in the top 25 um you know it's the first time since 2010 that a team from the mountain west um is actually appearing in the preseason poll so 
you know, taking these girls that have had all the success in the WAC, taking our Aggie soccer team and putting them into this type of a, a conference and seeing this type of competition is definitely going to be an exciting season. Definitely. It'll be, this is going to be a great, great season to follow. Uh, let's talk a little bit. The Utah State, they've got three uh, players that were named to the preseason All-Mountain West Conference. They've got two senior forwards. Uh, I will apologize beforehand. I'm not very good at pronouncing <laughs> names. But uh, they've got senior forward Mari Miyashiro. Yeah, Miyashiro. Miyashiro. I'm not exactly sure. Should but have, I should have grabbed the pronunciation. <laughs> All I know there, is when but... I watch her play, she's really good. So. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, yeah, no no, no disrespect. Uh, the fact that we can't I'm... pronounce your name does not mean we, we uh, don't respect yeah. what you're doing on the field. We are, we are very impressed. <laughs> exactly, and I'm sure you guys are going to... Uh... You ladies are going to help us out for sure, uh, <laughs> you know, if there's any mispronunciations yeah. or anything. Um, but, yeah, definitely, she's she's a fantastic player. Uh, the other senior forward named the All-Mountain West Conference team, this is a name, if you followed Utah State Athletics at all on, on Twitter or Facebook or anything, this is a name you probably saw pop up a lot on the feeds. Jennifer Flynn. What can you tell us about Jennifer Flynn? She, she I she led the team last year in goals scored and she is uh she's a lot of she is a she's a leader on the team you know she yeah. she steps up and she's vocal about things and she goes out and and makes herself heard but she uh she actually it was injured she wasn't able to play yesterday in the in the game well i guess depending on when you listen to this podcast it was yes. friday <laughs> friday w was the game against creighton but and she didn't play uh i guess she stepped on a piece of glass and cut her foot and she's going to be out for a couple weeks so that's a, a little bit disappointing for her i'm sure you know she's definitely yeah. uh someone on the team that that the team will miss but you know after watching them yesterday i am definitely i'm definitely convinced that other people can step up yeah and and make this team and uh make this team what it's been in the past and and be that scoring threat for the aggies definitely yeah, the the game yesterday i can't say it enough it was awesome and it we'll, really we'll, was. we'll talk a little bit more about it as well but let's let's keep moving on to the third member of the preseason all mountain west conference team junior defender taryn rose I gotta say, I no surprise to me at all that the that there's a defender on the preseason oh. All Mountain West Conference team from Utah State. Oh, definitely. The uh, she's one of those players who who last year she she was one of only four players who actually started every match last year. Um, and if last year was uh, was anything like this year, those defenders don't get subbed out a lot. They play. Mm nearly the entire time um in uh in the game yesterday those those defenders stayed in there um and she's not alone in that back line no there is a lot of talent in the back um and they are going to have a lot of shootout or not shootouts shutouts, shutouts yes. hopefully <laughs> hopefully not shootouts because we want them just winning but yes. uh yeah i mean for for us to have a, a defender on that list is it's pretty obvious, you know, when you hear soccer, a lot of the big name players in soccer, you know, you hear Landon Donovan, you hear a, uh, a mm -hmm. lot of these forwards that go out and score a lot of goals, and that's how you find out about them. But in reality, a lot of the times these these big name stars, some of the most talent comes in that back line, you yeah. know, whether it's, whether it's on the back line or whether it's in goal. Um, and a lot of times those players don't get the the type of recognition that they deserve. But I'm glad to see Taryn on that list. She definitely deserves it. Yeah. They, uh, Kyle, you'll have to help me out with this because I didn't write it down. But I, I was looking at that, that defense last year. I believe they averaged conceding it was point five five goals per game last year. Yeah. It. Uh, let me pull it up here. It wasn't. It wasn't much. They had a lot of teams, and in fact. They, uh, yeah, it says here they only had 13 goals um, scored on them for the whole season. Yeah, 0. .55 goals scored per game against them. So, I mean, if if a team's only scoring half a goal every game, you have yeah. a pretty good chance of winning, you know. Definitely. So, so the fact that that, you know, they, they say that offense wins games and defense wins championships, and you hear that all the time. But I think that's that's definitely true in soccer because if the other team doesn't score – 
you can't lose. You know, there's, there's a, you'll definitely come away with at least one point in that, uh, in that match. But, you know, I think that seeing the type of defense that our, um, that our Aggie soccer has is going to win them a lot of games this year. Um, and couple that with the offensive power that we've, that we saw yesterday. And, uh, these girls are going to turn some heads. It's going to be a fun year. I'm excited to, to get up to a lot of these games for sure. Well, I know my head was definitely turned yesterday when they played poor host to Creighton, the Blue Jays. <laughs> uh, they they jumped right out on them. They I mean, did. They uh, the that first goal was just five minutes in, just over five minutes into the game. They scored three goals in the first thirty three minutes. Oh yeah, and it was and it was uh, it wasn't that. Creighton had a, a bad defense either. You know, Creighton mm-hmm. had they're they're a solid team. There, that's where uh, uh, head coach uh, Heather Karens is actually. She actually was an assistant out at Creighton for several years, and that's mm-hmm. the reason that Creighton came out here was her relationship there. But they're not they're not one of these programs that is you know a roll over and die type of team. Yeah. Um. You know they were going to come in and and uh, just from what I had heard, it sounds like they were going to come in and definitely challenge the the Aggies and and uh, Utah State definitely looked like they were up to the challenge yesterday. I mean. That first goal uh, by Lauren Roundy was was fantastic. I yeah. mean the 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 assist, um, the Jenny assist Robinson was yeah was fantastic. Assist, yeah. She she kicked it right up. Lauren ran up on the ball and then was basically one on one with the keeper. Sent it just yeah. around you know up into the top left side of the side of the net, just outside the the keeper's fingertips. And I mean it was. Yeah. It was a fantastic strike. That, well, was, it, it, that she, was awesome. She showed a lot of coordination as well because she actually got fouled and, and was able to play on through through advantage. But she got it, – it looked like she maybe got pulled down a little bit or legs tripped up a little bit, kept her balance, kept her dribble, and, yeah, created a great one-on-one opportunity with the keeper. Oh, yeah, and Lauren, has, she's got a lot of power to her. She goes out and she – she's quick. She she understands the game really well, and she's able to, to go out. She's – I mean, I was. It was impressive. That's all I can say. Yeah. Was was as much uh, as many highlights as there were to that game yesterday. That first goal was a huge one for me. Oh, I yeah. think that was one of the most fun goals uh, I've seen in a while. So uh, definitely. But then that second goal was was a little. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a little interesting. Um, yeah. That Creighton keeper came out and and made that mistake. So. Yeah, came came way out, deflected deflected a shot, and uh, that Kylie Dib was was right there to to finish off from way. It was down, way out down. there. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> she was way outside the eighteen yard box. I mean, I'm gonna say she was thirty yards, yeah, possibly more out there. And when she ran up on that ball, and I mean, she kicked it forward almost almost like a pass. But yeah. you know, when you have an open net like that, yep. you. The last sure thing you want to do is in. yeah. The last thing you want to do is shank it off to the side or or kick it a little hard and high and miss. So when she uh, just kicked it forward almost like a pass and had it rolling on the ground, you yeah. knew it was going in. You know, yep. the second that she ran up on it, you could tell that was a, that was going to be a goal. Um, yep. But you know that was that was fantastic. But hey, you know those two weren't the only ones that scored. We actually had a local girl here yes. from a freshman out of Skyview High School actually came on and scored her first goal as an Aggie. Um, yes. Jessica Brooksby, coming out of Smithfield, Utah, came out and made her Utah State soccer debut a memorable one. Um, she had she had an awesome goal as well coming off that left side. She did. So she, she got a long pass from Brooke Larson-Levitt on a, a free kick, I believe it was. Uh, just She just bombs it down there, and, and Jessica Brooksby, she tracks it down and just fires away from from that left side and finds money in the net. It's very impressive. Oh yeah. Well, and Brooks, she's one of those players that we also uh, she's one of those defenders mm-hmm. uh, that we were talking about earlier. That yeah, Taryn's on that um, on that preseason list, but uh, but Brooke is also a solid defender back there. She's she she's was got in a the lot middle. of great height. She, she is. takes care of a lot of those crosses, and she's and... and she's fast. You know, I think when you see some of these girls that that aren't as tall, they look like they're moving faster out there. But Brooke covers a lot of ground. She's got a long stride. She gets back. 
Um, and she was solid in the middle for the Aggies. Um, yep. You know, as as Creighton uh, went down, even when they went down 2-0, it seemed like they kind of said, you know what, like, we might lose this game, but we're going to put some goals in the back of the yeah. net and at least make a name for ourselves while we're, you know, even if we're going to, if we're going to lose, we want to at least get a couple goals out of this. And they pushed hard. They were pushing up high. Yeah. The entire rest of the game, I mean, probably, you know, two thirds of the game seemed like it was Creighton just pushing, pushing, pushing. And it seemed like they were getting a lot of calls as well. Um, mm-hmm. Several fouls coming against the Aggies with a lot of set pieces. Yeah. And when you have a team that uh, might not have the same amount of talent, um, you know, where Creighton wasn't, might not have had the same continuity coming into the game or they might not have had the talent that the Aggies have, when you have a team that gets a lot of set pieces, that's where a team that doesn't have that talent can actually sneak in and get a few goals and, and possibly come out with um, – with you know sneak a win on a team like that and so that was a little concerning for me to see those those types of set pieces um but when it came to the set pieces that's when the aggie d stepped up and yeah. especially the aggie keeper Jeannie waller huge Holy shout out there to the sophomore <laughs> yeah I, uh, go so, ahead something that's interesting to bring up so so the score at the end of the first half is three nothing u state the shots utah state took five creighton took six yeah. So huge shout out to the defense, and in particular, definitely Jeannie Waller was awesome. Had uh, seven saves, and yeah. uh, five of those seven were actually in the second half because they were they were pressing. They they needed they wanted to be on the board so bad, and a lot of those saves that she made were were crowd pleasing spectacular oh, yeah. people she had nuts. the crowd going crazy with some of she's, those she's and she's you can tell she's uh she's an intense personality and not in a negative way you know she seems like she's very in control mm-hmm. but to see someone at her age she's just a sophomore see someone at her age and uh and her experience to step up and have yeah. that kind of uh have that kind of countenance in the you know they're defending the net she is someone that I could see making a name for herself here at Utah State. She was she was my player of the game yesterday. She yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Um, there were several shots that she saved, um, or crosses that she dove out and stopped. Mm-hmm. That you know there was enough of those. I Creighton could have had three or four goals easy if it wasn't for her play stepping yeah. up and uh, and making those. And there was one in particular. Um, that she made uh, in the, I can't remember, I think it was the uh, towards the end of the first half where Creighton, I mean, had a solid hit. I mean, they they really sent a rocket at her, and she dove out towards the right yeah. and caught it with one hand. I thought, yeah. you know, it might hit her glove and deflect in. I thought, hey, she might get a glove on that. But when she snagged it yeah. and it just stuck on her hand, I was like, are you serious? She, you know. She, she tucked it in, rolled, and it popped right back. That was incredible. Yeah, I mean that was if we were talking before the before the podcast here that I honestly think that if that would have been in a major league soccer game, that would have been up for goal of the week. Yeah, um, or save not of the week. not goal of the week, save of the yeah. week. You know, because um, she def- she thwarted it. She just snagged it, threw it right out. But you know, there was that time. Um, but then there was, you know, early on in the second half. Um, just a few minutes into the second half, Creighton was knocking on the door of the Aggies. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they were right there. And I think she had about uh, three saves in about one minute. I mean, yeah. just one right after the other. And you were like, man, you know, I was scared. I thought, well, Creighton's going to put one of these in eventually, but they uh-huh. didn't. She was right there. She was a wall the entire game. Definitely. I remember there was one, I can't remember if this was first or second half, but there was there was a cross or some kind of an entry pass that went up and and uh, Waller Waller jumped up and, and kind of punched it out, cleared it out with her hands, but it, it didn't really clear out. It, it kind of stayed in, in Creighton's possession, and they fired a shot off immediately quick. And I even said, oh, because I just I, – I expected after she had jumped up and done the one, I expected she wasn't ready yet for the next one. And she was right there, had it had it in both of her hands right there to stop it. Thought, oh, yeah. She's quick. She is. She's fast. And you know what? You could, you could tell that she was appreciative of – of uh, those girls in front of her, you know, mm-hmm. she uh, 
she's out there communicating and yelling at the top of her lungs, making sure that they know where they need to be, you know, that they find their marks and, and get on, um, get on and guard those, those runs that are coming in and, uh, the communication of the back line and, uh, and the communication of the keeper yesterday. I think that's really where that, that shutout came from. Yes. Yeah. You can attribute it straight to their communication. Yeah. Uh, Waller had, had some fantastic saves. Um, but there was as much as Creighton was pushing, you know, it was, it was obvious that these, this, Aggie defense is going to be something to something to see. So definitely, um, definitely continue on picking up right where they left off last year, um, with the uh, with keeping a lot of the a lot of the shots out of the back of the net um, last year. They picked right up where they left off and and they're ready to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, just seeing the the excitement surrounding this program, uh, seeing yeah. uh, families, kids high school students, uh, freshmen yeah. that were coming into Utah State. There was a lot of freshmen there, there yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure if that was because, you know, they're up there um, and they got told about it in a connections class or something. But, you know, I was impressed. There, mm. was, there was a good fan base there. And, you know, that's something that uh, I, I would like to see more of. Um, if we could get that amount of people out to each of these soccer games, it would be it would be fantastic. Um, these girls definitely deserve it, and I know that uh, home field advantage co- definitely comes into play. You know, let's yep. say when San Diego State comes to town, which they do. Um, looking at the Aggies' schedule here, um, San Diego State comes right at the end of October, but they're gonna have uh, they're gonna have a pretty solid. Uh, a pretty tough schedule there right at the end of of their uh, conference play you know they've got new mexico san diego state and boise state all at home to finish out the season the regular season before the mountain west tournament um which is down in new mexico which we mentioned earlier is is, yeah. is another fantastic program so these girls you know hopefully they're going to be peaking at the right time um and we're going to see um some upsets coming along as as they play against uh, New Mexico and San Diego State at the end of the year. Yeah. I think that playing them at the end of the year, having our team come together, I'd like you know I'd like to see them pull off an upset of one of those two teams, or if they go in and and just get a point out of it, you know, yeah. and and make sure that that they are sticking around and and make a run for, um, you know, yet another regular season uh, title. I think that'll be that'll be fantastic. Um, just uh, kind of a, a few upcoming games um, for the Utah State soccer. Uh, they have Utah Valley. They host them here on Monday, um, the 26th at 4 o'clock, same time, same place. So if you were there on Friday, make sure you come out again on Monday and, uh, and, watch, and watch the, uh, the Utah State soccer team take on Utah Valley. And then they go out to their first... Uh, well, I guess their "quote unquote" first road trip. They actually headed out to Southern Utah um, yeah. in an exhibition game and came away with a, a winning result there, uh, a one one nil um, result there. But then they head out to UTEP. Um, so you know, this is a, a chance for um, a lot of uh, a lot of Aggie Nation to get out, warm up your your cheering voices for you know the football game on Thursday and and some football games coming up to come and, and cheer these girls on as they play Utah Valley on Monday. Yeah, definitely so. come on out. It's, it's a great atmosphere. The uh, the product on the field is awesome. And uh, come come find your junkies out there, too. Yeah, Ky- we'll be there. Kyle's a great guy to be around in any scenario. But then <laughs> then you add the fact that it's a soccer game and, and he's, uh, you know, he... He cheers loud. He's knowledgeable. He knows. He knows what's going on. He can kind of see things as they're happening and developing. Plus, possibly most importantly, he rocks the soccer scarf like <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. That's right. I mean, the herd had those uh, soccer scarves out, and they were good. I-, I was expecting. I bought one first game because you know Logan Winters come along, and I'm thinking football. I'm going to be wearing this thing, but hey, <laughs> it's sure it's a fashion statement. You yes, know, that's soccer. That's where it's at. You wear <laughs> those scarves. And so, uh, so that's fun. Definitely come out and hang out with us. I mean, we're, we're definitely, um, open to have any, any of our listeners come up, just tell us who you are, tell us where you know us from and, and, uh, come hang out with us. You know, we, yeah. we love it. We have some drinks there. We hang out. We, 
we just have a good time you know it's aggie sports and and uh and we love it and it's quality soccer you know Mm -hmm. it's not you know watching like little league i mean these girls are good they're they're a fantastic team super competitive and they're tough as can be it's It's a fast game they play it fast you know um uh they're going back and forth on the on the field i mean at a thousand miles an hour it's it's a lot of fun um all right well you know we we hear a lot about football in the fall and everybody's excited and we're we're definitely excited both of us we're big football fans um there was a lot of talk last year about you know utah state football winning its outright conference championship and that was that was an exciting time that was a lot of fun um but you know as we mentioned earlier uh, soccer also won a conference championship and their conference tournament. Um, but there was actually three teams for Utah State that won conference championships last year. The other team is the volleyball team. They actually went, came out and went 15-3 and three in WAC play last year and won the res- regular season title. Um, they, fell, uh, they fell a little short in the tournament, um, Ended up uh, losing in the second round of the WAC tournament, but they, yeah, fifteen and three over the season in yeah. conference play. Yeah, and that was actually their first ever regular season title for the volleyball team, uh, according to the athletics website. So, so they're on the up for sure. A- exciting season last year, twenty-one and nine overall. Uh, they they they've got a lot of momentum, and I we got to talk about if if you're talking about Utah State volleyball. You just have to bring up head coach Grayson DeBose. This, oh, yeah. This guy is one of, like, the funnest personalities, tremendous, personable, I, loves to interact with people, hilarious guy. Uh, I actually, years ago, I took a class at Utah State uh, where where the professor occasionally would get talking about teaching cues and how to instruct someone on how to do a new task, especially a physical task. She would talk about different uh, administrative uh, things, basically all things that, that would make a good coach. And she was absolutely in love with Grayson DeBose as a coach. Every, everything that she talked about, she would always say, Coach DeBose does a great job of that. Coach DeBose does a great job of that. Uh, like Coach DeBose does, but she just <laughs> he he was uh, her like shining example of of all things tremendous coach. Oh yeah, and you can tell that you know you can tell the type of personality that he has. Um, you know he's been here for for seven years, and uh, and he has a a career record here of 113 and 98, which may not turn a lot of heads, but I think when you start to see where he's brought the program in recent years, um, you know, 21 and nine overall last year. That's mm-hmm. a fantastic year for our Aggies. Um, and I do have to, to just say, you know, there's, if there was one time um, that I remember Utah state volleyball, uh, one of the most fun volleyball matches I've ever watched in my entire life. And my high school was, you know, perennial going for state championships. So I, I watched a lot of volleyball all throughout high school. And, uh, but when I, when I watched the 2010 WAC tournament, our our uh, our volleyball team went up against Hawaii, and Hawaii mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what they were ranked, but they were ranked right at the top of the nation. They were, you know, you, you almost kind of went into the into the match thinking, okay, well, let's maybe hang with them and let's, and let's yeah. let's let's win one of these sets, you know, and and try and um, you know not get destroyed. But man, that we actually came out and we beat them. And that was one of the coolest, uh, one of the coolest volleyball matches I've ever seen. And you know, it's it's times like that when Utah State can knock off the one of the top teams in the nation in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and you just see that you know this is the that's the type of coach that we have that can lead a team to to do that type of thing. You know, can can lead them to a twenty one and nine season to a fifteen and three season in the WAC. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I mean. Obviously, there's going to be a step up in competition coming into the Mountain West, but you know, Coach Dubose, it, he's up for the challenge. And like you said, you know, he's super interactive with people. Yeah. Um, he runs the U, the USU volleyball Twitter. If you know, just so you, uh, if any of you are out there uh, that are, are major tweeters or 
just want to know a little bit more about these. That's if that's a follow, very illustrious title to, to claim. <laughs> tweeters. Being a I'm, major I'm tweeter. a major tweeter. <laughs> major league tweeter, MLT. <laughs> but uh, not to be confused with a BLT. No. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, the Utah State soccer is at USU soccer. Pretty easy. And then the Utah State volleyball team is at USU volleyball. Um, and so, and they're both really interactive, yep. uh, Twitter handles, definitely. But coach Dubose actually, he runs the, the Twitter handle for, for the volleyball team. And, and he's, he's funny. Awesome. He is. On there. That's a great <laughs> follow. If you're not following both of these teams, get on there and follow them. It really is. I mean, as far as Utah state Twitter handles to follow, I would put both of those in probably my top three. To yeah. be honest, they are fantastic, um, and and yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure he's he's pretty involved in the Facebook page as well. Volleyball has an incredible Facebook page. Hmm. Um, they have a lot going on there. They're constantly posting pictures, talking with uh, fans on their Facebook page, you know, and uh, and it's it's fantastic to see that that type of outreach from a coach that understands. You know, this is where yeah. a lot of my fans are getting their info. This is where a lot of my fans are my younger generation fans. Yeah. This is where they're hanging out. You know, they're they're on Twitter. They're on Facebook. And he embraces that completely and actually goes out and tries to be a, a good uh, ambassador for the program and for the university. Um, and he is. You know, he's a stand-up guy. He's funny. He's outgoing. Um, and speaking of Coach DuBose, uh, the network actually did an interview with him. Yes. Um, so watch for that coming out on YouTube. Um, Our and boys I be- in the front row show. Yeah, sat they sat down with him. They sat down with Coach Dubose, and uh, and he actually even will break down a little bit uh, some of the the volleyball, uh, some of the ins volleyball and ins and outs. So those of you who aren't too super volleyball savvy um, can hopefully you know we can educate along as we learn ourselves. Um, neither one of us has played volleyball you know i've watched quite a bit but it's been a while um but you know it, it's exciting to see um the program growing like it is here at utah state so watch for that on youtube watch for it i believe it's going to be a podcast as well um coach dubo sits down with the front row show guys um and it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good uh it's going to be a good time um but let's just Look, uh, kind of coming up at the uh, at the future for Utah State, um, Blake. You were there at the uh, at the blue and white game. I wasn't able to attend, but just kind of give me just your a few thoughts and feelings that you had uh, on the blue and white game. Blue and white game about the turnout and about how it went. So it was it was a pretty good turnout out there. Uh, a number of fans came out. I'm horrible, absolutely abysmal at guessing numbers but uh <laughs> you never won those contests was, uh, with like a m&ms no, in a jar or anything no, like you, you know the episode <laughs> of the the office where they're guessing like how many i think it's m&ms are in a jar or yeah. something and kevin kevin guesses something like 29 I can't, I can't remember but his guess gets totally made fun of and they're like there's like that many green ones <laughs> like that's me. That would have been my <laughs> guess. I may have been like farther off than, than he was, but uh, but there, there was a pretty good turnout out there. And and again, Coach Debose, you know, he he grabbed the microphone and kind of talked to the fans. And then he also there were uh, special guest coaches of the of the two squads. So so Coach Debose actually walked around the the stands and and got to meet a lot of people and, and was talking. Uh, just really fun fun environment. The team was on hand after the scrimmage to to do autographs uh just just a breakdown of kind of how the the action went uh junior rachel Orr, outside hitter she had a match high 22 kills uh, and then added to that 12 digs as well nice the in case anyone is is interested to know the white team actually came out the victors in a thrilling (laughs) thrilling five sets come come from behind so, uh, so some good action there. Uh, senior middle blocker Alyssa Everett, she held the match high for blocks, came in with 13, and then she also added to her performance 15 kills. Wow! As well, uh, match high digs coming in. A freshman libero, Hannah Gleason, came in with 28 digs out there. She was a 
which is the digging machine. Yeah, really. Uh, I, she's from uh, she's from out in California. Um, as a just as a a freshman coming in, you know, to see to see a performance like that from a freshman, um, especially one coming in that isn't from around Utah mm-hmm. to come in and and you know open some eyes. You always like to see that. You know, you never know. Um, you know these these recruits that come from from further away what their ties are. Um, so I was actually yeah. really happy to see that she came in, had a solid game, and is looking to contribute right away for the Aggies. Definitely, right. I I neglect. I want to jump back to to Alyssa Everett a little bit. She actually she's a, she's a senior. She actually redshirted last season due to a knee injury. So so I'm I'm sure she was just itching to to get back out there, even even though it was a scrimmage and. Uh, Get back out there and play. So, so big shout out to her come, coming back off of a, a red shirt season last year with an injury, coming out there and uh, throwing down lots of blocks. Um, moving on to uh, another blocker, mid blocker, a sophomore, Caitlin Van Hoff. She held the team high in attack percentage actually oh, with wow, her nice. ten kills. Um, she her attack percentage ended up being point three four eight. Nice. So that's a solid performance for, uh, for Caitlin. Um, and you know, and and just looking here, it looks like the blue team also, you know, uh, Rachel or for the white team had 22 kills, you know, leading the match, but it looks like, uh, Ellie Brainard from Saratoga Springs. Um, she had 21 kills herself. So, I mean, it wasn't that, uh, lopsided as far as that goes. There's, you know, there's some serious hitters out there other than Rachel for sure. And then let's talk. We'll throw a shout out as well to a to a setter. Junior Paige Nevies had forty five assists, um, plus a match high three aces on, on services. So that's solid. <laughs> so it, so it was aces. fun. It was it was fun to watch them out there. Uh, it, you know, it's it's a scrimmage, but but it's always fun to watch watch the action, watch them out there competing. And uh, they the the thing I've always liked about volleyball is how how the team the team pulls together so much they after every side out after every point how they all come in together and you know congratulate each other they're, they're excited it's it's an exciting sport to it watch really for sure and and the and the girls they uh they come out and and they're excited for each other they're ex- you can tell it's a and i think that this goes back to what we were saying earlier about coach DeBose is the type of environment that he has uh, facilitated here at Utah State is just these girls love each other. They come together as a team. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure that, you know, as the season progresses, that you'll, that'll that just become more and more apparent. Um, but, you know, I think that, that just seeing the type of uh, – the type of girls that we have in this program, seeing that, you know, afterwards they take a bunch of team photos, they go out and they sign autographs yeah. for, you know, a lot of these, these girls have uh, younger kids here in the Valley come up to them all the time. And, you know, uh, I didn't grow up in a, in a city that had a university nearby. So, you know, I didn't have those type of people, I guess, in, in, uh, in my community that would be, would be my heroes. But I remember, you know, as a little kid, you know, one, you know, eight, nine years old, you know, catching one of those little footballs at the football game <laughs> and going out to the high school football players and asking for their autographs, finding my yeah. favorite players. So, I mean, these, these little volleyball fans that we have along the, um, the Valley here, you know, as they interact with these, with these, uh, these volleyball players from Utah state, I just, you know, you love to see that they go out and they sign these autographs and they, um, you know, it's it's definitely a, a close community feel here in the valley, and and they embrace that. Um, just kind of looking ahead, um, you know, we've talked about how their last year went with uh, with winning the regular season title. Um, they are, the Aggies are actually picked to finish fourth in the Mountain West Conference um, for this year. Uh, that was picked by the the coaches. Um, they were picked to finish fourth. Now, you know, and there's a, there's a lot that's that's said, you know, about, you know, we've talked about with our basketball team, our football team, our soccer team, that we've seen a lot of success in the past coming and then coming into the Mountain West Conference, you know, who's, and then we we almost feel like, well, we're new and we played in the lowly whack last year that people aren't giving us credit, you know, and I see that in 
our football team. I see that in our soccer team, even as we were talking earlier, they're not picked to, to do well, but I honestly could see them going in and challenging for a conference conference championship right yeah. away immediately as first year. And I see the same thing with our volleyball team. There's absolutely no reason our volleyball team can't go in, surprise some people and, uh, and, and really earn the respect that I think that they deserve. Yeah. You know, I, I think that as Utah State fans, you know, we, we understand what kind of a program we have. We understand what type of a team we have. But, you know, to go out and make sure that the other programs know that and the rest of the Mountain West yeah. is excited and, and recognizes that, I think, uh, I think that'll go a long way. So I definitely think that, yeah, we might be picked to finish fourth, but I would not be surprised to see us fighting for that conference championship right down to the wire with these other teams. Yeah, I, I see no reason why they shouldn't be battling battling it out for that. I, I my experience with sports as a as a spectator, which is most of my experience with sports, <laughs> <laughs> I I've I've come to notice I it's, momentum seems like it's so huge. Momentum is just seems like it's almost everything sometimes, all other things being equal for sure. But uh just the fact the fact that they're coming in with so much momentum. They they've won their first ever uh, title, conference title. I, they're excited about their new conference. Uh, they return. Haven't talked about this yet. They do return eight letter winners as well as five starters. Uh, we've talked about what a great job the coach does, and uh, I just think they're going to come in excited and ready to ready to surprise people. Yeah. I, don't think me or Kyle will be surprised or shocked, but the the people outside of of Utah State, I think, will be they'll be impressed. They'll yeah, that's they they don't look like a fourth place team to me. And uh, and when you see you know just looking at the preseason polls here, I just pulled these up. It looks like uh, you know they may be uh, in fourth place, but the the range of votes from third place down to sixth place is very minimal um i mean our, we have our, our first place san diego state has has nine first place votes and 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 they're picked to actually win um second place is colorado state with two first place votes but unlv utah state new mexico and fresno state all four of those teams are just outside San Diego State and Colorado State. I mean, so rea- in reality, as we say Utah State could make a run, anyone in our conference really yeah. could make a run. It's going to be a fantastic conference. These girls are going to need to bring it every night um, and understand that a lot is at stake every single time they play. Yeah. Um, you can't let one of these teams that doesn't have as uh, one of these programs that doesn't have as good of a of um, a team coming in. You know, like like a Nevada or an Air Force come in and steal a game. Yeah. Um. You know they've got to take care of the ones that they that they need that they're expected to, and then try and steal a few against Colorado State or San Diego State, and and get that. And I th- I would not be surprised to see that at all. The type of caliber caliber coach that they have, um, who they're returning, just. Every bit of that is uh, is pointing to the fact that these these guys are uh, they're here to to make some noise. I mean, you see uh, Ellie Brainard that we were talking about earlier with the twenty one kills for the for the blue team. She was actually uh, WAC freshman of the year last yeah. year. Um, she was on the WAC all freshman team, and uh, and she was, yeah she was the WAC freshman of the year. So I mean, we've got depth. We've got some. We've got definitely some younger. Um, some younger talent coming in. Um, you just look at some of these top returners coming in. Paige ne- Neves, Neves. Yeah. I, Sorry, if we mess up your name, let us know. I, Tweet I, at us and say, "Hey, this is how you pronounce it." I always I spent <laughs> time in Brazil, and so anytime Neves. it looks somewhat uh, Latin or, or whatever, I always go with the Brazilian pronunciation, which is probably <laughs> hey, you know usually what? That's not better right, than I could do. But... <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's perffect. Uh, then Ashlyn Rogers, she's a junior. Caitlin Van Hoff is a junior, Rachel Orr is a junior, Ellie Brainard's a sophomore, and then we have a redshirt senior in Alyssa Everett. Um, so I mean, we've got some, we've got a young team. Yeah. So you know, they're going to come in, get some experience here, playing these, um, playing these teams, and uh, and really just move on from there. You know, uh, and we've got some some really solid freshmen coming in as well, and uh, and I think that they're they're going to do well, and they they get their first action actually this. This coming Friday, um, August 30th, they head down to the University of Utah tournament where they're going to play mm-hmm. uh, Utah, Northern Iowa, and Fairfield. 
um, three games in two days. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's going to be kind of the first chance that they have to get out, find out who they are as a team, find a, find an identity as a team, and, uh, and, and get to work. Um, University of Utah has a, has a solid volleyball program. Um, I don't know much about Northern Iowa or Fairfield to tell you the truth, but, you know, I, I think that um, getting out to this tournament, playing those three games in two days, and, you know, like you said, Blake, um, you know, you've had experience with sports, I've had experience with sports. When you go to these tournaments and you stay as a team and you're hanging out all yeah. day Friday, all day Saturday, you go to tournaments on weekends, that's when you come close. You know, yeah. that's when you really start to, to know each other. But, you know, there's they've got a really solid schedule. Their first home game is actually going to be um, September 8th. Uh, so not until September, they get Boise State at home. Um, but, they, I mean, they've got University of Utah Tournament, University of Portland Nike Invitational, and then they go out to Duke and playing the Duke University Tournament. So, I mean, they've got, they're going to have some experience coming in um, and some road experience. Uh, so that is definitely going to help them as they get out and travel. Um, you know, they start playing some of these teams away. Um, I think seeing these types of tournaments going in and playing some some uh, some good competition is going to help um, is going to help this team, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to see Coach Dubose doing that. Yeah. I one one last thing on volleyball. It, actually, at the time of recording, this event has come and gone, but I kind of want to throw it out there to our to our Twitter followers. If if anyone had a chance to go uh, Saturday morning, there was a free skills clinic that uh, the volleyball team put on and uh, I, I I just like to hear I it sounded like a great event um, I know I told my wife about it and she got really excited about it but then didn't end up being able to go but uh, I if if you went then uh, let us let us know what what you thought about it, it sounded like a great event um, and if you didn't I would imagine they'll be they'll be doing another one next season I presume this some they'll continue but but yeah, great, great program. It's a good program to uh, to follow and uh, and support for sure. Um, and that's that's one other thing we wanted to uh, to also let you know. We are on Twitter at uh, USU Junkies. Come find us if you have any questions about uh, anything going on with any of these teams or anything Utah State athletics related. Let us know. Um, you know we're we're part of the front row network we work hand in hand with the with the front row show guys um i actually write a lot for the website um blake here does a ton for our youtube channel um that you're going to see both of those uh, avenues get picked up quite a bit here as uh as the seasons for uh utah state athletics get uh, get on uh get running um so find us on on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be at USU Junkies. You can find us individually. I'm at Haywood H E Y W O O D underscore Kyle, and then Blake's also on on uh, Twitter as well. What's I'm, your? I'm at Blake Had. So if you have any questions for us specifically or for the program, definitely throw that. Um, throw us a tweet. Let us know. Um, throw the hashtag tweet sheet. Um, so that we know, you know, there's a, you're going to have some questions for us. And we're going to scatter those throughout our programs um, uh, with recordings coming up. Um, just kind of in closing, wanted to, to wrap things up uh, with the cross-country team, um, with them coming up. They've got a, an invitational coming up um, here at Utah State, Saturday, August 31st, so this uh, a week from now. Um, it's going to be out at the Innovation Campus um, just so you're aware, when you see these uh, athletes running around, I know they're going to have a lot of the roads blocked off, possibly. Um, but uh, when you see them out there, make sure you go and cheer on our Aggies. The men start at uh, uh, 9 a.m. They're going to be running a, an 8K, and the women are going to be running a 5K at 9.45. So uh, when you go out and see these see these athletes, um, definitely give them a shout-out. Uh when you when you talk about cross country runners, you know I I always have a lot of respect. I I did it for one year in high school, <laughs> and uh, and it's it's a tough it is a tough sport to do, you know. And you think about, you know, we give a lot of credit to to some of our other sports, but these cross country runners, it's a tough sport, and they have my respect definitely. And and Blake, yeah. you ran track for Utah State. Tell us just a I little did, bit about and I that. I stayed away from the uh, running long distances. <laughs> I was not not up to that. You're that smart challenge. enough to do that. Huh? And uh, <laughs> yeah, 
But you know, I I will say it was it was always funny because we we meet up the track and field team meets up with the the cross country team. They they become part of the the track team when when track and field's in season, and uh, you know, and they're still running their their five Ks and their sixteen hundreds and stuff. It was always funny. We would go out to eat at some restaurant on at an away meet, and so I did the long jump and triple jump, and. Uh, We'd we'd be out at a restaurant and I would order a nice fat steak and and whatever and the all of the the distance runners would kind of give me a little you jumpers throwing throwing down a steak the night before the meet <laughs> while they're over there eating their you know Alfredo pasta and whatever <laughs> they, it, it's the the training that goes into being able to to compete in long distance cross country type events is it's on i've heard it referred to before as it's it's on a knife's edge or a razor blade or however the expression yeah. went uh it's it, you can overtrain and it will absolutely crush you or you can undertrain and it will absolutely crush you mm-hmm. so the the coaching that goes into it as well as the discipline of these athletes is is a tremendous thing to to truly be respected yeah, and I agree. I think that, you know, my experience with track, I actually ran distance and did the cross-country deal. Um, we talk about, you know, athletes, you know, these college athletes and, and how much training and how much, you know, you know they're in the weight room, they're, they're mm-hmm. constantly doing this. Um, and, and you definitely have to give a ton of respect to them. But I think that if you're going to pick a sport that uh, a player has to be aware of their body, every, every last inch of their body – um, needs to be in, in top form. Um, it's cross country. I mean, you know, like you said, if you train too hard or you train too little, um, it's going to be, you know, you're, you're going to have a bad race. You have to know exactly how your body's responding. You have to push yourself enough, but not too much to break yourself down. And these athletes that we have at Utah state, um, are some of the best at that, you know, that they, they understand what's going on with their bodies, with their lungs, with their heart, with their yeah. mind. When they get out on a race, it is such a mind game um, with other athletes and yourself. You mm-hmm. know, you have to understand how they're thinking and you have to understand how you're thinking, you know, to yeah. to, to place the best. So, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic sport. Um, it's kind of hard to be a spectator. Unfortunately, there's, you know, it's, it's <laughs> unless not Unless you're a really good runner. Unless you, you want to like go run alongside them, but, you know... <laughs> Um, but you know, I'm hoping that we can get someone from the cross country team out, uh, and actually come and chat with us a little bit about their season as their season progresses. I'm a good friend with, uh, Kyle McKenna, who's one of their, one of their top men's runners. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can get him out on the program, but I'm excited to see what the cross country team's going to do this season. Yeah. I, so, so last year talking about what they've accomplished, the men ended up taking second at the WAC championship and, uh, women came in at third. I traditionally this cross country team has been extremely strong in the WAC, always at the top, multiple titles. Uh, head coach Greg Genzel has done a phenomenal job with this team. Uh, he, I obviously know him as a he's the track coach as well. I know him from a personal level uh, as a coach and as a neighbor for for oh, a while nice. there. <laughs> uh, awesome family, his whole family's great, and uh, he he does a great job. The the kids kids like him they compete hard for him um and he's like I say built built a good staff um i can't even begin to count the number of times he's won the the conference coach of the year uh steve reader who's heavily involved with the distance guys is is he's almost like another coach to Bo. It's just a super fun fun guy to be around you just you just love to find him and and talk to him uh, tremendous guy. He'll make you laugh and kind of make make you a better person. So it's a it's a great staff. And these the the kids that are out there competing are just are just great kids as well. And they a lot of people don't realize, but with with distance running and it, Kyle probably knows all about this. There's there's a whole strategy that goes oh, yeah. that goes into it. It's it's not when the gun goes off, you run until you finish there. There's a whole, there's parts when you push, strategy. there's parts when you hold back, there's yeah. parts when you stay in the pack. And that's, parts and you, you coordinate that with your teammates yeah. quite often. It, you, so true. as you're doing this, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. It's, it's, it's really, it's really impressive. And it is, it is a team sport. You talk about the individual results, but it is a team sport. Yeah. I remember there was a time, 
you know, just, just seeing one of my high school teammates as he passed me and went and he was pushing, he was having a good race. You know, he was on one of those times that we talked about where his body was and his mind and everything were just right mm-hmm. on point. He was having a phenomenal race. He passed me and went up and he was going to go challenge some of the guys at the front um, to, you know, to hopefully go to, to, to take, to take the race. And, you know, I could not be more excited. You yeah. know, I was so excited for him. I was having a pretty decent race myself, but you know what? When I saw him pass me, and he was going quick, and he was making that final kick at the end to go to go in uh, and challenge for that, I was I was stoked. It, I was so excited. Yeah. Um. You know, and and these runners are the same way. They love each other. They're excited when they when others succeed. So, um, I do have to to give a little shout out the pre nationals and the NCAA championships for cross country this year are in Terre Haute, Terre Haute, Indiana, which you know if you're not sure where that is, that is the home of the Indiana State Sycamores, which is happens to be where Larry Bird played mm. his college ball so if you're uh if you're a cross country fan you know pray to this pray to the larry bird statue or whatever <laughs> and uh and get uh see if uh you can get a little bit of the spirit of larry bird to to go out and help out our cross country team out at the ncaa championship so um also on a side note if if you ever want to have an entertaining few minutes go find a bunch of larry bird's in-game trash talking that, that <laughs> that's true to do that's it's true he was the king of, him and reggie miller awesome. were about the king of trash talk <laughs> both of them were phenomenal so i well, one one more thing keep keeping it back to, to cross country i as kyle brought this up i it actually gave me goosebumps i the final kick at the end of a distance race we talked about how it's a little bit hard to spectate because they're running all over the place with cross country but if you hang out at near the finish line and you watch these athletes come in on their final kick, giving the last little bit, you know, all the strategy is done. Now it's just every last bit that you have left, who, who left what in their tank, who's mentally stronger at this time. That last kick in a distance race is incredible incredibly exciting oh yeah the the crowds that are on hand will go nuts teammates going nuts for it just urging people on as they're just straining and the the amount of excitement from each individual is i mean it's related to a buzzer beater at the end of the game it's related both to a last second touchdown or last second defensive stand to win a game it's the same exact thing and it happens every single yeah. race. Yeah. There's no there's not That's many blowouts, awesome. but when you see a kick and these are two runners neck and neck, <laughs> busting it, just giving all they oh, have, man. whether it's for first place or for fourth place or tenth place, when these two runners are going neck and neck and do giving all they can, their fans, their family, their teammates oh, yeah. are screaming their lungs out for them. And oh, it's it's, it's awesome. exciting. You know, I just got goosebumps myself talking about it. So it's a, it's an exciting sport. Hopefully, we can see some people out uh, supporting our our cross country team. Definitely. Well, in closing, Blake, it has been a fantastic uh, morning for me coming out talking sports with you. Um, I'm excited about this Junkies podcast. Hopefully, uh, we can keep it a little entertaining, keep some people. Uh, uh, up to date on all of their Aggie athletics. Um, make sure we just wanted to to make sure that everybody knew about uh, the websites, the YouTube channel. Um, it's all at USU Front Row Network or USUFrontRow.com. Yep. Um, we're all it's all part of the Front Row Network. Um, find the the different accounts on Twitter. Um, find our our YouTube page and. Uh, and uh, come interact with us. You know, it's a great time to be an Aggie going into the Mountain West uh, Conference. Got a lot of teams uh, with a lot of success in the previous seasons and looking to make some noise here in their new conference. Um, it's, it's an awesome time to be an Aggie. Make sure that, that you come be a part of, of the network for sure. Definitely. Thanks for tuning in, Aggie Nation. All right. For the Front Row Network, I'm Kyle Haywood. I'm Blake Hadfield. Go, Go Aggies. Aggies.